this is courtesy of WWD magazine, right? And I wanted to touch on this because I just think it's an interesting story in terms of um, the changing nature of fashion, the changing nature of just, you know, sensibilities, preferences, um, representation and all that. And it feels like a real battle between the new world and the old world. And this is courtesy of WWD magazine. It says the following, what's going on with Celine and Vogue? And the article says here, French luxury brand Celine and Vogue appear to not be on the best of fashion friends after Emmanuelle Alt left Vogue France, formerly known as Vogue Paris. Still, that name doesn't ring in it. It doesn't really fall off the tongue like Vogue Paris did in it. Vogue France, like what? Um, the brand's artistic, because you know they're not going to represent France, you know what I mean? They, you know they're not going to be going to far-flung places in France and actually talking to real people and getting their voices heard or displaying different types of French beauty that doesn't just kind of, you know, um, subscribe to the traditional sort of um, old-school cinematic view of what French beauty is, right? They're not going to do that. They're just going to be very specific and kind of catered to only the core cities, um, the core towns. Ugh, but uh, where, what do I know? The brand's artistic creative image director, Hedy Slimain, um, is understood to be upset, so upset by Alt's departure from Rogue Runway. Um, was, so, yeah, so let's repeat that again, because I didn't even know this is actually even happening. It's fucking insane. This guy's still out here kind of beefing fucking publications. I remember back in the day when Hedy Slimane banned, what's her name, Kathy Horn from reporting onto his show, right? And she had to just basically, and she just kept moaning and bitching about it on her uh, flipping reviews that she had to view all the clothes via 2D images online. It's like, babe, welcome to our world. We have to view things on our fucking phone and zoom in on them and post them on Instagram and make ourselves look cool. Um, welcome to our world. As they continue, sorry. The brand artistic, creative, and image director. Look at the amount of roles he's got. I wonder if he gets paychecks for each of them or if it's just a forward slash, forward slash. Um, Heidi Samain is understood to be so upset by Oz's departure that Vogue Runway was not invited to cover Celine's Spring 2022 virtual show. It quotes here, it says, it was not our decision to not cover the Spring 2022 but we look forward to covering the brand's next show said the Vogue source. So basically they weren't invited. That's kind of fashion speak for he told us to fuck off. We told him to fuck off and let's see if he changes his mind next time. Especially if it affects the sales, right? No one, no one ever comes out and says what they say. No one ever comes out and says what they think in fashion because they're trying to protect themselves in order to make sure that if a job comes up or if there's an opportunity to make some money with you, they can still do it. It's a, you know, it's a proper two-faced world. It continues said WWE WWD also understands from sources that Slimane has has expressed his frustration to Vogue Global Director and Condé Nast Chief Executive Content Officer Anna Winter and hit the brakes on some advertising with Vogue brand. So he's so upset he got on the blower. He texted Anna Winter and was like, "Look, I'm not standing for this. Why did you get rid of Emmanuela Alt and you know change it to fucking Vogue Paris and get rid of all these um what what are they called uh, is it Sagli is it Alt and Saglio right the other woman is it Geraldine Saglio the other stylist that's meant to be really important over there mad isn't it a spokesman spokeswoman for Celine said that it, that was incorrect but did not provide any further detail over the past year amid a global pandemic Condé Nast has made sweeping changes to its organization structure as it looks to streamline global editions to save cost it began last December when execs announced that Winter would be given even more control by making her chief executive content officer, global editorial director of Vogue, while continuing to cover it, to oversee Vogue US. Do you remember when it, social media tried to cancel Anna Winter because of all the stuff that was happening at um, fucking, what's that kitchen? Bon Appetit or something. Was it there, Bon Appetit? Imagine, you, you people actually thought you could cancel um, Anna Winter because of a couple of omelets or some shit. Like, are you insane? Like... They just she just doubled down and got even more jobs even more power and just said minor like just relax um and just kept it moving basically she didn't flinch at all nothing performative nothing at all she didn't post a black square she just kept it moving um at the same time edward Innerfall, the widely celebrated top director sorry top editor at british vogue was promoted to european editorial director at vogue for the markets owned and operated by Condé Nast, which include uk france italy germany and spain which probably might explain why hedy samain is having such an issue with um this new direction they're going in because if edward edward innerfor is basically taking over um the con the the basically direction of that magazine it's not going to look anything like what emmanuela Alt's vogue paris look like or even what karen Reutfeld's vogue 
Paris looked like back in the day it's going to be completely different it continues here it says both moods explain you know one was very white <laughs> one was very Parisian and very Eurocentric and one's going to be very multicultural that's basically what I'm trying to say it continues it says both moves explained why there had been a mass exodus of European executives and editors in the weeks prior to the announcements including Vogue Germany and Spanish editors in chief um, Christine Arp and Eugene de la Trontini respectively man I remember that Christiane Arp she was everywhere on the street it's crazy how fast fashion moves in it these women were at the top of the food chain the, the, the Mount Everest of street style icons I always got the impression Emmanuel Alt was kind of annoyed by the pictures that she kept getting taken of her but then she always kept getting dressed up she had that kind of ambivalence on her face a little bit of a kind of scorn right she kind of she kind of got that kind of appearance of somebody that maybe will look down on you right um, but you kind of like that it's kind of hot and the thing Christine Abbott is the same sort of thing right she was really like she, I remember her wearing, I think, loads of dark denims, leather jackets and shit. Like, just really interesting that suddenly that whole street style of people wanting to look like editors and wanting their jobs and wanting to know what they drink for coffee, how they put magazines together, completely changed. And then people just started to want to be just standing around for standing around sake. That's when the whole fashion blogger thing blew up. And now we have people who are being celebrated for things that you would have never celebrated for in the past, right? Whether it's being fat, whether it's having some sort of disability, whether it's, um, I don't know, the pe people have been celebrated for things that would have ostracized them from fashion before. That's what I'm basically trying to say, um, which is a cool thing because I think it's reflective of the world overall, right? It's a lot more inclusive than it was prior. But it's also understandable why somebody like a uh, Hedy Slimane, who kind of prides himself on being quite exclusionary, right? Just based on his clothes, right? You Like a Hedy Slimane designed flipping dior trouser that's a 32 isn't going to be the same size 32 as a jean you're going to buy from fucking you know whatever other brand right he cuts trousers he cuts shirts and t-shirts and outwear in a way that caters only to his muse and his muse is usually really skinny wafy looking indie boys and it's only in recent years that he's kind of pivoted and started to include black kids in his group because that's the only thing that he was willing to compromise on but he still manages to and again i don't know how he does it he's casting a sensational i don't even think these guys even exist right but he still manages to f number one he can he finds really wafy looking young kids who look like they're in bands because they don't look like they don't look like tiktok kids because tiktok cute kids or cute boys for the most part again that's weird to say cute kids but you know what i mean the, the the kind of the hot boys on tiktok for the most part are quite buff they're into working out they're into doing press-ups some of them do steroids and shit right they're crazy about that about all that stuff there's a very americanized sense of beauty that way but hey this man obviously loves the british thing they're kind of um the peak doherty sort of style kind of looking guy right and you're not going to get that in America. But he somehow still manages to find that guy, that kid that still listens to bands and still goes to live shows and shit or plays an instrument. And he gets them in their shows. And he still, further than that, manages to find the unicorn of all unicorns, which is black kids in this current era who don't listen to rap or hip hop or all that stuff and just are still into bands and still going into live shows and whatnot and you know maybe uh put in flipping eyeliner on and whatnot all that stuff it's just insane what he finds but i don't know how he finds them but he does continued on quickly here says alt stayed on by may wwe reported that she was about to exit alongside olivier lalan of the french edition and gq and joseph I don't know how you know pronounce that sad name. Yeah, da, da. She made the official announcement in September in an Instagram post stating, I'm deeply proud to announce that will be my very last issue of Vogue Paris since 100 years existence. With a special anniversary issue, it has been a huge privilege for me to be able to be, help create it. I couldn't have done it without the talent of a wonderful team and a brilliant readership to support our work. Al has been with Vogue for more than two decades and began her career working alongside her predecessor, Crane Royfield. She was named director in 2011. 2011 yeah, and they fell out as well. I would, I I'm, I'm curious to know if any fashion insiders got the goss I want to know why did they end up falling out carrying right for the manual at all because they were an amazing flipping team and some of the some of those editorials that came out during that kind of time especially again with the much cancelled Terry Richardson around they were sensational man I've still got a lot of those magazines um, in my collection but I want to know why did Emmanuel at all and carrying right for end up falling out um, Eugene Trochi was named the successor by the title of head territory content he now so that Vogue Paris will become Vogue France but yeah um, I don't know man I'm a little bit conflicted on this I kind of understand Heidi Semaine's 
annoyance of the direction fashion is going in because it does feel like there is no because nowadays there is no such thing as i won't say brilliance or there's there is a celebration of mediocrity there's also not this idea that fashion is kind of um what would you call it people are trying their best to make fashion especially runway stuff too similar to what you see in everyday streets right it's it's becoming like a mirror of the streets too much the kind of escapism that you used to see when you go to fashion shows doesn't exist as much and the kind of otherworldly nature of the alienly looking type of models that walk down the runway wasn't exist there because i think that some people don't really realize how weirdly freakish models look when you see them in real life like they're usually very long very lanky very slavere they have very kind of prominent facial features that you kind of spot and you know okay this is why this kid was a model because he's got really big ears really big eyes bushy eyebrows or something about their face it just kind of strikes you and for whatever reason they make the clothes look really cool when they walk down the runway now that doesn't mean that that was the only archetype that that person's designing for it doesn't mean that that's the only person that should wear those kind of clothes but there's no denying on that particular platform on that particular stage that's where it kind of shines the best i guess it's similar to like a movie just because you see really good actors kind of acting out a scene in a movie doesn't mean you can't then repeat that scene to a friend and it can still resonate but the best way to deliver it is to have these set actors doing this particular uh role or doing a particular scene in the end of it and i feel like nowadays that doesn't really exist so that kind of designer that has a very specific mu a specific person that they kind of designing for doesn't exist which is probably why people are so eager to have the likes of phoebe philo back because she spoke to a specific person and again if we follow one's an even interesting one right because she never from my experience had i can't remember many shows of phoebe follow maybe towards the end she maybe did it but there wasn't many shows where she was being inclusive where she had like plus size models on the runway but then it, all the accounts i've read of phoebe philo celine the people that bought it the most were older women who felt the most comfortable in it it made them feel chic it made them feel comfortable it made them feel hot without having to wear a mini dress and whatnot you know what i mean but the people that she put on the runway didn't necessarily reflect that but the people that bought it were obviously those people so she was obviously designing with them in mind but on the runway she felt like the best way to present it was to have these people wear those clothes and i just don't understand why that isn't just accepted why it always have to be a thing of like oh in order to in order for people to like get off my back of me to oh, never get off my back it feels like people are doing it just to seem like they're a good person it's not even coming from a real place it's not as if they're like trying to change the so not just trying to kind of um, strike a conversation in terms of the unfair beauty standards that exist in the fashion industry. It's just that they're just doing it to tick a box. Oh, let's get somebody that's got a disability tick, somebody that's got that's not white tick, somebody is fat tick, somebody is short tick, like somebody's missing one eye tick. It's not even done with any kind of love, appreciation, um, cons not even concern, gratitude, whatever. It's not done with any of that. It's just done because they want to seem as if they are good people. So it's basically a model version of a uh, of flipping. Um, it's a fashion version of fucking virtue signaling, right? Which basically makes me think of that kind of fake protest thing that um show that Karl Lagerfeld did back in the day with Chan with Chanel, which is kind of a bit of a genius masterstroke. And also makes you think of Karl Lagerfeld quote where he basically said one of the reasons why he decided to lose weight when he did lose weight that time was because he wanted to wear um Hedy Slamane designed Dior, I think back then, right? And he basically said, Yeah, it doesn't look good if you're fat. You basically have to get skinny and he basically lost a bunch of weight. You know, maybe it was all those young guys who was keeping around him, but in general, he ended up looking amazing in the clothes. And it was a bit of a crass comment, but it just is what it is. Like, there's no denying that certain clothes made by certain designers look better on a particular frame. And I just don't know why this, that isn't just a thing. And again, fashion itself, anyway, is a bit of a gross industry because, in general, they basically make you want to buy more things that you basically need every single season they basically make you desire and long for things that you possibly don't need possibly can't afford and that's possibly going to damage the environment and our world irreparably for generations to come but you justify it so i don't know how what people can't just suspend belief a little bit be like you know what that's how you want to kind of rep that that's fashion isn't representative of the rule and it never has and never should be i feel like it kind of is a facet of it maybe it reflects one part but in terms of the idea that it should always represent every single person it just feels a little bit what's the point 
Do you know I mean, you might as well just start making designing clothes for fucking Matalan and shit if you want to address the world and shit. Um, but yeah, I kind of get where Heidi's kind of Kissimmee's came from. I understand his anger, um, especially again, like I said, considering the kind of complete pivot that they're going from, you know, having you know, um, Emmanuel Alt leading the charge at Vogue Paris, which again, she doesn't, she can't have anything to complain about either because you know, Vogue Paris towards the end was quite boring with Emmanuel Alt as a head. Um, the editorials were all the same. Um, it wasn't really fresh. She as a stylist, I felt like had hit a bit of a ceiling. Um, again, you know, it was a sad for me as well because I'm a big fan of hers. I, you know, I come up from that school. Or I come up from that generation where people were kind of idolizing editors and stylists more so than just bloggers hanging around the street and shit. And she seemed like pretty an interesting figure to kind of look at from afar. Like I said, she always seemed like she didn't really was that happy that people were taking pictures of her, but still. You know, there was a particular aesthetic that I was kind of in love with. And again, during that time too, she made Elizabeth, Isabel Marant shoes pop. Not pop, but like, I feel like Isabel Marant clothing basically popped a lot more when Emmanuel and Alt wore it. She wore a few cardigans. Maybe she was consulting. I don't know at the time, but she did a lot for that brand. Um, and that was, again, was because of her street style and all that sort of stuff. So I can understand that might be a bit of a shock as well, that suddenly she woke up and she was out. I mean, you're out of the, you're out of the system. People don't want to people don't want people don't think your voice is valid they want new interesting voices now things that are more representative of the quote-unquote real world she's maybe somebody that comes from a very wealthy background you know like it's not something that people want to hear or see anymore it's just a very interesting place and again she doesn't really, she doesn't really do that many interviews either but i really wish to see or to hear what she has to say again the iconic look of a emmanuel at all in it the the what you call it the short jeans, the kitten heels, the leather jacket, the hair. Mm. Oh yeah, I remember this. I want to be a right Do you remember that? Crazy man, Emmanuel Alt. Yeah, that was part of the zine I think they put together. Um, that I think it was like an old Saglio zine. Somebody has that as well. Please let me know in the comments. I really want that zine if it's available. Anyway, the battery's gonna run out soon, so let me just stop talking about it and rambling. But yeah, um, I get it, man. It's amazing. I'm happy with Vogue. I'm not happy with Vogue. It is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is.